Well, it's not. No, no, that, 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 that. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are talking about uh, something that doesn't really, or a rare thing. Um, now people are going to comment saying, oh I know someone who does it. Yes, but there are fewer and fewer and fewer people who do two-stroke re-sleeving. So when you do, um, you know, re-sleeving can happen for both four and two-stroke and Basically what you have is you have, just say we have a cylinder, let's say it's an air-cooled one, you have a cylinder, like so, and then what you do is, this is generally, nearly all the time, especially, I don't know, since the 70s onwards, this is aluminium, and you use aluminium because you can cast it, because it's cheap, um, it's lightweight and its thermal conductivity is really quite good compared to steel. However, if you run a piston in aluminium, it is going to gall and chew it up in no time. It literally won't last you a couple of miles. Um, so what we do is we sleeve it, which means you have a steel, cast iron. There's loads of different... I say there's loads. There's a few different ways you can do it. You can do steel sleeves, that's more of a modern thing with the um, invent of or the mass production costs of better quality steels and all the rest of it. But generally it's cast iron um, for a lot of sleeves. This is why if you look at just like mopeds and stuff where you can still buy cast iron, uh, or not just mopeds, small CC uh, two strokes, you can still get cast iron um, Cylinders, barrels, you know, you can still get just solid cast iron ones. And if you look at that generally, sometimes a plated, but generally it's just a clean bore. Um, and, and sometimes they do have cast, irons, uh, cast iron barrels with cast iron sleeves. But when you do a four stroke re sleeve, so let's just imagine this is a four stroke cylinder, when you do a four stroke re sleeve, it's piss easy. You heat the whole thing up, you pop it out, you get your other sleeve, you can cool it down or what have you. You pop a new one in, you bore it, you hone it, and job done. That's pretty much it. If it's uh, there's a difference between wet liners and dry liners, which I'll do a video on because that's kind of its own thing. But we'll just go with an air cooled one now, just for simplicity and all the rest of it. Now the problem is with a two stroke is that you have ports, and them ports, you know, uh, have a rotation to them. They have a right way in a sense. You know, you don't want your sleeve to rotate and so on. So there are still some old guys, you know, some old boys, and there are still young guys who are picking it up. But it's kind of one of these things in this day and age where we chuck stuff away, where re-sleeving is becoming rarer and rarer. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to take um, a couple of moments, this video basically, to talk about the process of re-sleeving. So I've got some pictures, and there's a guy, you, you might have seen these pictures before, there's a guy who's put some awesome pictures up of the process he does and uh, I just thought I'd nick his pictures because it's a good example. He's put them up on uh, online, so I don't think he's going to be that bothered of me just, you know, sharing with you what some of you might not have seen. So the way it works is is that you have your original cylinder, and what you've got to do is you've got to heat that up so the aluminium starts to expand away from the sleeve uh, because they've got different thermal expansion properties and all the rest of it. And then you put it in a hydraulic press and you pop the old sleeve out. Why would you want to do this? Because pistons only have only come in certain sizes. Pistons generally come from you know from the manufacturers, oversized ones. You can get obviously your aftermarket pistons, but generally a lot of these sleeved engines that you're replacing are engines that have done you know 50 to 100,000 miles old school engines, if you want to call it that. And that's when you really want to do a re-sleeve because this bike is quite rare, quite expensive, and it's worth buying. Um, or re-sleeving your cylinder to you know get more life out of the engine whereas in nowadays with more modern stuff one they haven't usually done that many miles and number two is you just buy a new one because they're still available and all the rest of it but let's just you know let's not talk about the ins and outs of marketing and you know product recovery and blah 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 so how does this process work you know how do you 
make sure that your ports and, and all the rest of it are all lined up with a sleeve because you obviously can't put the sleeve in and then just guess where the holes are you know you've got to basically make sure they're perfectly matched up and lined up and there's also a few other things that we're going to talk about but um, you know some people think oh you just do a port map you know where you get a pencil or whatever and we've done been doing that port mapping for two strokes and stuff and you just you know you just lay that on your cylinder and then just uh, your sleeve and have at it well if you do that you're going to be miles out it's as simple as that you're never going to get it lined up properly and it's just going to be horrible so the first thing you do is like I say is you pop out your sleeve so now you've got your, your you know your knackered old sleeve and usually it's egg shaped or the sleeve the actual ball looks like shit you know it's really and you've gone the maximum size of pistons that you can go you know you've gone um, half a millimeter one millimeter all the way probably up to maybe even two millimeters oversized pistons and your pistons still slopping around or it's had a massive horrible seize or damage or whatever and it's basically just melted and the sleeve is fucked so the first thing you do is like I say is you pop out your old sleeve um, once you've popped out your old sleeve the next thing you have to do is you have to mount your, your um, the actual cylinder so now you've popped out the sleeve you have to um, mount the cylinder in a lathe and basically you bore out um, and you only take the minimal you need to but you bore out your actual cylinder barrel you bore that out because the actual fit between the liner and the actual cylinder itself is all is just as important as matching your bore and your horn to your actual pistons and all the rest of it so you have to start off with a really good surface um, not only that is you have to make sure you've got really good contact um, throughout the entire thing you know there is no point having um, voids in here and this is massively exaggerated there's no point having big voids here where they don't touch because this could possibly cause um, heat and expansion issues it can also cause cracking because you've got to remember there's ports in certain places um, it can cause uh, rotation of the sleeve if you do not have a good contact surface area so you're going to uh, basically machine the sleeve you, all, you generally always custom machine the sleeves to fit your cylinders so you need to make sure that you've got a really perfectly nice round hole to receive this sleeve so that's what you do is you bore out your cylinder to make sure that you have a really really nice um, concentric circle that's you know as good as you can get it and some guys hone it after that as well just to make sure they've got a really because honing is not just the practice of cross hatching and stuff honing is about one getting uh, bringing a hole to its the, the dimension that you want so think about it like this if you have a hole and you want this to be, I don't know, 84 millimetres and 100, 84 millimetres, 120 microns, bang on, as close as you can get to that. You would bore this out to uh, 84, I don't know, 100, something like that, or maybe even shyer than that, actually. You might go 84, um, 50, 0, 50, like this, and then you would hone this back out to get to that. It's basically honing is... It, you know, it's another machining process where you can creep on, creep up to the line of exactly where you want to be. So then you do that, uh, you can hone your actual cylinder itself, and then once you've got to the size you want, then you can crack on with the rest of it. So the next thing you do is you can either get um, what they call, and I forgot the word for it, but it's um, cast iron, centrifugal spinning, uh, spin casting. Oh, there's another word for it, I can't think off the top of my head. But um, you can cast... Uh, basically thick wall pipe in a sense you know really thick wall cast iron you can buy it like that you can actually have um, cast iron sleeves um, custom you know custom cast cast iron costs fuck all and usually they do the sand casting process which again is really quite cheap all you have to do is generally make a plug or something like that for the center and then um, so you have your sleeves cast and you can have them all lying around and what have you, you can have a selection on a shelf or what have you um, and then what you have to do is obviously you need to chuck this up and you need to get your dimensions and you need to machine um, this sleeve to the dimensions you require so generally they all have a shoulder on the top and then you'll have your centre hole like that, your bore generally they have a, a, a stopper shoulder basically 
to um, stop the, stop it falling all the way in because obviously then you can clamp your um, cylinder head on top and then it's all clamped in there it's not going to start jumping around on you or anything like that or anything crazy also stops you pushing it in too far so then you, you machine your outer diameter to be a press fit so this will be oversized this will be oversized to your bore in your cylinder and then what you do is you have to um, shrink the sleeve, heat the cylinder, and then press them both together. Now you might notice all of a sudden that you haven't put any, uh, you haven't put any ports in or anything like that. Then the next thing you have to do is that in your cylinder, and this can be a bit hard to explain, but um, you press this brand new sleeve into your cylinder, and let's just say you've got this like this. That's a bit of a bad example, but you get what I mean. Get rid of that. I need to give myself some room to draw. And then obviously you'll have a transfer port like this. And if we do that again... Nah, fuck it, just do it. Do it live, Matt. Do it live. We love watching your shitty drawings. There we go. Over-exaggerate the shit out of this. So you'll have some transfer ports or whatever and then your exhaust ports. Now, this entire sleeve, what you do is you'll then dunk this in um, nitric acid, and this part of the sleeve here is exposed. So the nitric acid will swim in here, and it'll attack, and it'll dissolve, it'll start to etch these surfaces here where the ports are. And when you pull it back out, you then have to go through the whole heat, heat process again, pop your sleeve back out with your press. And that's one of the, another good reason why you want quite thick walls on your sleeve because you don't want to warp it pressing it in and out and all the rest and put too much stress on it. And the thicker wall the better. But then what you end up is you end up with, a, I'll put the picture up, you end up with this where you can see the exact etching marks. And this is another good reason why you want to make sure that you bore out your cylinder um, and hone it because then when you press it together the acid's not going to leak out and bloody, you know, give you a weird false reading and just go around the sleeve and just fucking etch it all. So as you can see on here, you can see where it's etched it. Um, you can see where it's etched the sleeve and then this is where you need to cut. Now this is the important thing because now you have your cylinder back out, uh, your sleeve back out of the cylinder and then you'll have these etching marks. Now this is the important thing, you have to take note before you do this about your actual sleeve. Because if you look at your sleeve that you removed when it was in your engine, you'll notice that your ports have certain angles to them, like this. And you cannot just plunge cut straight down, they have to match it. Because your transfer ports will look like this, and this is in the aluminium, this outside, this is the sleeve, so this is your cast iron. And if you look at your sleeve, or you look at all your ports in your engine, you'll see that they come in at weird angles. So if you were to just machine this straight down, so if you put this in the your uh, in your mill in your actual vice, if you just cut straight in like this, like vertically down straight onto it, then your ports aren't going to match up because here's the port here's the port for your actual cylinder. And then you've just cut across here like this. Well, this isn't lined up. You've only got this little tiny little gap here. So you've got to make sure that your angle of cut matches the actual angle of your port. So there is a skill to this. It's not just about, oh, you etch it with acid and it's easy and you just start milling away. Um, but yeah, you start milling away at the ports. It's really, it's quite awesome because it's not a bit of Sharpie marker out shit like that. You've got this etch and you can quite easily see it. Um, you know, and... It, the, even that, just machining them out so they do match up really nicely is a bit of a skill in itself. As soon as you've done that, you'll end up with a sleeve that looks like this so that you can see all the ports that are in it and it's all beautiful and all lovely jubbly. And then what you do is you then just reinsert that sleeve and orientation is seriously important here, obviously, because before you just stuck the sleeve in any which way you wanted and then etched it, pulled it out, but now when you put your sleeve in, orientation is absolutely key with this. Now, I have seen in the past some guys actually drill a hole in the top of the sleeve. So you'll have your sleeve, you'll have your sleeve like this. And I've seen guys in the past 
will actually drill a hole here and into the cylinder when they start and then stick a dowel through it or sometimes they might even use more than one, they'll use two. This is a good way to keep rotation, stop the thing going out of alignment and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, you do the same heat process, you heat it back up, you then press your sleeve in, and then jobs are good and you do your final inspection. And as soon as you do that, then, and only then, do you remove the excess material for your bore. The reason why, is, like I've stated before, is we want this wall to be quite thick so that the cylinder doesn't warp out of shape and do all sorts of stupid things. Um, again, hence why we use heat, so it's um, so the cylinder itself, you know, expands and grows. So we're trying to put as the least amount of uh, pressure and force on this sleeve, so it doesn't start going out of out of shape. Especially when you start cutting your ports out. You know, once you've cut your ports out. Um, it, you know, the actual sleeve is getting weaker and weaker and weaker because you take a big chunks out of it. Then once you've done this, like I say, is you bore it out to your final dimension or close to your final dimension. Then you do the horn and then job done. You know, you stick your piston and you rebuild your engine and, you know, you have at it. So, one day in the future when we get the new workshop sorted out and all the rest of it, we will actually do some, I'll do some re-sleeving and, you know, basically show you this entire process. Hope that makes sense and I will see you in a bit.